Good morning, today I am going to have the lecture in sliding mode control. The outline of this lecture will be as follows, first we have the introduction and then we see the conventional sliding mode control with some example. Coming to the introduction, in most of the situations there is a discrepancy between the actual plant and its mathematical model. This discrepancy is due to unknown external disturbances, parameter variations of the plant and unmodeled dynamics. Due to these reasons designing a control law is a challenging task. The control law that can take care of these causes is called a robust control law. One among them is a sliding mode control scheme which has the advantages of reduced order compensated dynamics, robustness to disturbances, I mean the bounded disturbances and finite time convergence. Considering an example of single dimensional motion of a unit mass as shown in the figure here, which is pulled by the control input force and which is resisted by the disturbance force, which is given by the term f of x 1 comma x 2 comma x t, where the disturbance is a bounded disturbance and this disturbance has is including the viscous friction force as well as the unknown rigid forces associated with this mass and the system states are x 1 and x 2 where x 1 is a position and x 2 is the velocity of this mass while pulling. Thus the state space model of the system is given by x 1 dot equal to x 2 and x 2 dot is having the control input u and the disturbance force which is the bounded and is given by mod of the disturbance is less than equal to L which is a positive quantity. Thus the control problem is to design a state feedback control law which is u equal to minus k x such that it can drive the system states to equilibrium point asymptotically that is as the time varies from 0 to infinity the system states reaches the equilibrium point. Considering the state feedback control law which is for these two states system it is u equal to minus k 1 x minus k minus k 1 x 1 minus k 2 x 2 where k 1 greater than 0 and k 2 greater than 0 provides asymptotic stability only when the disturbance part f of x 1 comma x 2 comma t is 0. But if you consider the disturbance existing in the system, then this control state feedback control law will drive the system states to a bounded domain delta. We are going to see that what is that bounded domain delta, which is a function of delta is a function of k 1, k 2 and L. So, it is a function of this domain is a function of k 1, k 2 and the disturbance bound value for a bounded disturbance. Thus, it will not bring it to the convergence, it will bring it close to the domain of it, it brings it to the domain that is all. It will not converge to 0 or equilibrium point provided the system disturbance is not equal to 0. Consider the example which is the single dimensional motion of the mass with states position and velocity with the given initial conditions x 1 that is the position of this system is at value 1 and the velocity of the system is at minus 2 that is x 1 of 0 is 1 and x 2 of 0 is minus 2 with the controller gains k 1 k 2 being 3 and 4 respectively and with the disturbance being 0 it will converge the system to stability to equilibrium point at time tends to infinity. That is the asymptotic convergence for the system is obtained for the disturbance being 0 by this state feedback controller. And what happens when the disturbance is given that is f of x 1 comma x 2 comma t is given as sin of 2 t say when this disturbance is given that state feedback controller will make the system states common state 
or stay in this domain which is this domain is delta which is a function of k1 k2 and the bound value l it is not getting converged whereas it is going to this domain and stays there by this control law thus now we are getting into the main concepts of sliding mode controller let the desired compensated dynamics for the given system one uh, one dimensional motion of this given two dimensional two degrees of freedom system for the two degrees of freedom system we are considering the desired compensated dynamics state dynamics of the system being the first order given by x1 dot plus c x1 equal to 0 it is a first order homogeneous differential equation where c greater than 0 and here x2 of t is x1 dot of t for this system we have the solution being x1 of t equal to the initial value multiplied by the exponential of minus c t and the derivative of the solution is x2 of t equal to x1 dot of t equal to minus c x1 of 0 into exponential of minus c t. This shows that the states system states x1 x2 converges to the equilibrium point asymptotically from this two expressions we can from this solution of this differential equation we observe that these two states converge asymptotically and also what we have observed in the system desired compensated state dynamics equation is no disturbance effect that is the f of x1 comma x2 comma t that is the disturbance effect is not observed on the state dynamic equation compensated equation. So, here we introduce a new variable where the system dynamics is equal to sigma instead of 0 as we have seen in the previous slide it is 0 in this case the dynamic equation. Now, we equate the dynamic equation to a new variable called sigma thus sigma is a function of the states x 1 and x 2 here in this example and here it is given by x 2 plus c x 1 where c is greater than 0 to achieve the asymptotic the aim is to achieve the asymptotic convergence of the state variables x 1 and x 2 in the presence of disturbance the value of the variable sigma must be converged in finite time by the control law u. Now, we have to decide which is the control law that is a sliding mode control law that drives the state system state to asymptotic stability by driving the state the sigma variable to finite time convergence. Now, applying Leibniz function techniques to the sigma dynamics let the dynamic let the Leibniz function candidate be v equal to 1 by 2 sigma square. We must note that the selection of the Leibniz function candidate not only allows us to have the analysis of the stability, but also it helps us in designing the controller. So, here v equal to sigma which is equal to x 2 plus c x 2. For the asymptotic convergence the following conditions must be satisfied. So, v must be positive definite and the second condition is as sigma tends to infinity the value of v must also be infinity and the third condition is the derivative time derivative of v the candidate v dot less than equal to 0 for asymptotic stability that is for asymptotic stability v dot must be less than equal to 0. But for finite time convergence we modify the condition 3 by taking v dot less than equal to minus some constant alpha v power 1 by root 2 where alpha is a positive constant positive value. Thus instead of v dot less than equal to 0 we take this condition so that we conform finite time convergence.
that is v dot is less than equal to minus alpha v power 1 by 2 will lead to finite time convergence. So, we have the derivation here in such a way that d v by d t is less than equal to minus alpha v power 1 by root 2 1 by 2 sorry which implies I am just changing the d v and d t 1 by alpha v power minus 1 by 2 d v equal to that is less than equal to minus d t. So, integrating both sides gives 1 by alpha integration v of 0 to 0 v power minus 1 by 2 d v is less than equal to minus integration 0 to t f d t. This integration has been taken by this x axis is t and y axis is the v value. So, v value initially is v of 0 finally, it is going to be 0 and t final is say t f. So, that this value from here comes down to 0 value at time t f goes this way and it goes this way. So, the initial value of v is v of 0 and the final value is 0. Similarly, t varies from 0 to t f that is thing which leads to after simplifying this t f is less than equal to 2 by alpha v of 0 whole power 1 by 2 where alpha is greater than 0. So, we see that t f is not infinity whereas, it is a value which is a finite value which implies that t f is the finite value. So, that v gets converged in that finite time we have to design a controller u. Controller u has to be designed now. So, that this drives sigma variable to 0 and infinite time that is it drives we need to design a controller u. So, that it drives the variable sigma to 0 in finite time in finite time and we will keep it in 0 thereafter and we will keep the variable in 0 thereafter thereafter. So, now we will focus in the design of controller u. First of all, the sigma dynamics must include the control law u. That is, what we have the sigma dynamics is sigma dot equal to x2 dot plus c x1 dot, which implies u plus because x2 dot is u plus f of x 1 comma x 2 comma t plus c x 2. Now, we know that v dot equal to sigma sigma dot. So, v dot equal to sigma multiplied you substitute this value of sigma dot here u plus f of x 1 comma x 2 comma t plus c x 2. Okay. So, this is the thing and which implies after getting c 2 getting cancelled. So, we have u equal to minus c x 2 
plus a new variable v where v is a new variable okay so we assume we are assuming u equal to minus cx2 plus v so we get v dot being sigma multiplied by f of x1 comma x2 comma t plus the new variable since f of x1 comma x2 comma t is less than equal to l which is a positive value so we have v dot less than equal to sigma l plus sigma new variable v selecting the new variable v as minus rho signum function of sigma we have v dot less than equal to mod of sigma into l minus mod of sigma into rho thus v dot is less than equal to taking the mod value outside we have l minus rho being say equation 1. Considering now considering v equal to 1 by 2 sigma square and v dot less than equal to minus alpha v power 1 by 2 we get from the v value we get a sigma square equal to 2 times v which implies mod sigma is equal to plus or minus root 2 v thus we can say that v power 1 by 2 equal to mod sigma by root 2. So, v dot becomes v dot less than equal to minus alpha into mod sigma by root 2 which is say equation 2. Now, equating equation 1 and 2 we get minus alpha into mod sigma by root 2 is equal to mod sigma into L minus rho. Therefore, therefore the control gain rho of the dis discontinuous controller is given by rho equal to L oh sorry rho equal to L plus alpha by root 2 which is nothing but the gain of the discontinuous control part. Therefore, final control law u is given by u equal to minus c x 2 minus rho signum of sigma where rho values L plus alpha divided by root 2. This is the constant L is a constant alpha is a constant. So, rho will become a constant. So, the first term. So, the first term of rho equation is responsible for the disturbance and the second term is responsible for finite time convergence. Now, let us see that through simulations having designed the controller we see through simulations what happens with the initial conditions and the values of c and rho taken by 1.5 and 2. Thus, with the same example of the single dimension 
motion of the mass with states x1 and x2 with the disturbance sin of 2t how asymptotic convergence of the state variables are obtained. With this control law which is u equal to minus c x2 minus rho sigma of sigma we get the asymptotic stability of the states as seen in the figure. Next what happens to the state uh, to the variable that is a sliding variable how it is converging in the time domain we are we are seeing in a finite time convergence as you can see that it is getting converged in the finite time to 0 the sliding variable sigma is converged to the equilibrium point 0 at the finite time t f which is much close to 0.25 seconds as can be seen here in this figure. Next we are seeing that convergence of the state variables from the initial case x1 being 1 and x2 being minus 2 x2 being minus 2 we have from started from this trajectory that is the reaching trajectory after reaching it goes to the sliding surface that is here this phase is called reaching phase of the system states and this phase is called sliding phase of the system states. Once this sliding surface is like this it continues. So, once the system state trajectory reaches the sliding surface, it the sliding surface is designed in such a way that the system state trajectory will be reaching the equilibrium point that is a uh, theory behind this uh, sliding mode control. Now, what happens to the control input value? So, you can see that initially the control signal is with 5 who is the value and it can come as the time increases it has this value which is having certain chattering problem chattering that is the control law is the one which stabilizes the system to converge to asymptotic stability, but the control law is having chattering and the chattering can be addressed in the higher order sliding mode involving super twisting algorithm and other approaches. And finally, now coming to the conclusions, we say that in this lecture we have started with a second order system and we have converged it asymptotically when the disturbance is not given. Once the disturbance is given the conventional controller say for example, the state feedback controller brings the system to the bound of a bounded domain in such a way that it cannot converge to 0. Whereas, in the designed sliding mode controller having two phases one is the reaching phase and the sliding surface phase and sliding phase. By these two phases this sliding mode controller confirms that the system states can be reaching the convergence point reaching the stable point asymptotically by finite time convergence of the variable sigma which is a sliding variable. And two designs are to be considered in the sliding mode controller one is the design of the control law u so that the system can be robust to the given input and design of the surface that is a sliding surface so that the asymptotic stability of the system state variables are confirmed. These are the two conditions to be considered while considering the sliding mode controller. So, in this lecture we have seen the sliding mode control basics we started with the controlling a single dimensional motion single dimensional motion of a 2 degrees of freedom system second order system. So, that the system under state feedback controller k 
can be made to get asymptotically converged when the disturbance is 0. Once the disturbance is given, the system could bring it to the domain bounded domain of the disturbance, so that uh, the asymptotic convergence is not possible with state feedback controller. So, sliding mode controller has to be designed so that two design conditions has to be have to be considered. One is the design of the control u so that it can bring the system to the sliding phase like it should bring through reaching phase it should bring the system to the sliding surface. Once the sliding surface is reached by the design of the sliding surface, we could assure that the system states can be converged to the equilibrium point in asymptotic time. That is in as the time increases the system states will be converged to 0 by the design of the sliding surface. So, this is as an example we can simply think about a simple example for the sliding mode control logic. It is in such a way that when you throw a ball in a open space, the ball will not go to the particular equilibrium point, because we are throwing it from any, any initial point. But once we consider a sliding surface which is like a channel that will end up in the equilibrium point. So, our main aim is to bring the ball to the initial point of the channel, so that the channel will take the ball to the converging equilibrium point. So, this is how the channel here in the sliding mode controller is basically the sliding surface, where we denote it as sigma equal to 0. This is a sliding surface that will bring the system trajectory to equilibrium point. So, our aim is to by reaching phase we bring the system state to the sliding surface initial point. Once it reaches the sliding surface after completing the reaching phase, then the sliding surface will make the system trajectory to get converged in the equilibrium point asymptotically. That is all about this lecture. Thank you very much.